get back into shape. Get back into shape. Gotta get back into shape. Gotta get back into shape. Gotta get back into shape. So I'm definitely not a morning person by any means, but uh, here I am today, uh, Saturday morning, and we're gonna be heading to a scuba swap. And that's down in Etobicoke, Toronto. Uh, we're gonna be going down there to help out with uh, Jody from Adventure Sports, who I am a dive master with. And we're gonna be helping him sell off some older stuff that uh, he no longer needs and see if we can generate some revenue for him. So uh, gonna be taking some videos, see what the swap is all about, and we'll do a full review. So, uh, wish me luck. And this is a full walkthrough. This is the private consumer area where they can list their products that they want to sell. And on the left there, we have all the BCDs and we go into the regulators. In the back is a lot of the electronics and cameras and such, and then a lot more regulators here. Large selection, different types, different qualities, different uses, and all the tank bands and accessories. We have wetsuits and dry suits and all kinds of uh, wearables in the back here. In the middle that you don't see too well is uh, some a large selection of BCDs. And then all the hoses and cables on the back table there. More BCDs and back plates. Large selection of tanks underneath the tables. A lot of those were cleared out by the end of the day. On the top there in the back you have fins and uh, masks and snorkels. On the top you have a large selection of fins including some really cool classics. There's one up here, it looks like frog fins on the bottom left hand corner of the screen, which are really cool. And some odd accessories and weight belts and such. And here we start getting into the vendor area where we have some full face masks and... Uh, this vendor here has some free stuff at the end there for donation. And then a lot of used stuff and then finishes off the table with some new items. And then we head on over to the Dive Academy. And to the right there is Adventure Sports New Market, uh, which is where I dive master with a large selection of different items that we were trying to clear out. And right in front, we have this uh, shelving unit that kind of blocks a little bit of our table, which we weren't 100% impressed with, but it's up there. And a bunch of uh, technical cave divers showcasing all their product. Now this is Alec Pierce, who's a very experienced and one of the original pioneers of scuba diving, showing off a lot of his classic vintage hardware. And all the stuff he's been focused in or focused on with Sea Hunt. So that's his Sea Hunt collection. And all the covers he's been on and everything. Original stand up there with the original apparatus, the foot of it. This was a cool display. This was Parks Canada, so you could buy your Tobamori Pass right there. And then panning around, we have a Dan booth, we have Save Ontario Shipwrecks, and then we have the Ontario Underwater Explorers, which is who put on the swap itself. So just finished up at the Ontario Scuba Swap and I must say it was a very good show as far as uh, from a consumer perspective. Uh, they only had about 2,000 square feet to work with so there wasn't a ton of space. Uh, in total I think there was about five vendors uh, set up at the show. So not a ton of vendors which was good. Uh, as far as the foot traffic, foot traffic was way down but apparently in scuba shows in general uh, foot traffic is way down they were talking I was talking to some of the other people that uh, go to a lot of the bigger shows and it's a industry thing 
Uh, Scuba shows, the attendance is way down. This was the first show they've put on since COVID. Uh, so they've had a number of years off. This is, I think, their 28th show that they've had. So uh, it's rather impressive, their track record. The uh, I did take some video from the inside to show a little bit of the foot traffic, a little bit of the product beforehand. There were some great deals in the private areas. There was um, a large range of prices. Uh, some people, I guess, um, value their product or whatever they have to sell at a, an extreme price compared to others. So you could pick up some aluminum 80 cylinder or uh, 80 cubic inch cylinders for 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, where other ones were priced at 140, 150, 160. So huge ranges in the prices. But honestly, going back at the end of the day, most of the stuff sold. Uh, so the cheap stuff obviously sold at the very beginning, but even at the end of the day, uh, the stuff sold. There was a um, a Zegel Ranger BCD in a size medium that was in the show. It looked absolutely brand new and it was selling for $350. I was very tempted to buy it. Uh, there was also one that showed uh, quite a bit of wear in a different size that was uh, $425. There was one that was really worn that was $500. And uh, the one that was priced at 350 sold at the very beginning. Later on, I noticed that the $425 one sold uh, about halfway through the show. And even at the end of the show, the $500 really worn one sold. And that's a BCD that has about an $825 uh, US list price on it. So it's still a good deal, but uh, it goes to show you that even the higher price stuff did sell on the private side. Uh, as far as the vendor area, we didn't get a lot of traffic. Uh, the traffic kind of went through the private area, went around the private area and exited the private area. If you didn't find what you're looking for, then you could kind of try and find the vendor area, walk around and find us. We were also positioned behind another booth uh, that had a large rack. So it looked like we were kind of an extension of their booth, but we weren't. Um, I think we only made about seven sales not a huge dollar value on those sales either. So uh, it wasn't exactly very enticing as far as sales, but what was nice is we were able to make a lot of connections with people, uh, talk to a lot of the vendors, a lot of people that we know in the industry, um, make a, a number of new connections with people. And uh, we were able to build the, the mailing list for, um, for the store um, and for the charters that happen in the summer and stuff. So there was value there. Uh, will Jody do in the future? Probably not. Um, unless something changes as far as foot traffic and such. Again, all the shows have been down as far as attendance goes. So anyways, um, yeah, I'll have all the details. There will be footage uh, shown probably by this point. But uh, overall, not a bad show. Not a bad show. I wouldn't mind coming back here as a consumer next year. And please, don't forget to... Uh, hit the subscribe button and give us a follow. Make sure to hit the bell to be notified when we have any new videos. Thank you for watching.